Welcome. My name is Pam Godboys, and I'm here today to share with you a yin practice. So we're going to do about 20-ish minutes in yin, and the idea uh, for yin is to help to kind of detox the tissue and also to help strengthen the connective tissue. So we're going to get started right away. I'm going to tell you what the practice is about as we go through it. Um, so just follow right along with me. We're going to be hanging out, sitting down, holding poses for a little bit longer today. We'll start by bringing the soles of the feet together into butterfly. Uh, you can probably see them sitting up on a pillow. You can be on the ground, you can be on a pillow or a blanket. It's not necessary, you don't have to be there. Um, you can also use a pillow or a blanket or um, some sort of a stool or something for a little bit of support as you come forward. So in this position, we're gonna allow the spine to round. Allow the hands to come down, maybe come to rest on the feet. Allow the head to drop. I'm going to keep my chin lifted so that I can talk to you as we move through this. So the purpose of our yin practice is we come into a shape, in this case, we come into butterfly. We find that first appropriate edge of resistance, and then we pause there. It's that spot where the body says, okay, this is good. Let's stay here. Let's not go any further. And you so begin to find your stillness, find your breath, and be in the pose. Yin is not a sensation-free practice. It's not a passive practice. It's, a, uh, it's, a, it's not neutral, basically. And so when I talk sensation on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being sleep, 10 being extreme exertion, I want to be somewhere between a 2 and a 5 on that scale. What that translates to, for most of us, is a dull, broad ache. So for instance, in butterfly, as we're rounding forward, you might start to experience a dull, broad ache in the lower back, in the back of the hips, um, in the outer hips, all of that is appropriate. If you're feeling any uh, sort of sensation in the knees, um, in this pose in particular, you can prop the knees up a little, you can lift the pelvis more. Um, we don't want to feel any pain um, anywhere in the body, but specifically the knees. So if you're feeling like a little bit of a tugging, in the IT band, because those are tight, that's okay. Um, but anything that's kind of pulling directly on the knee um, is a problem. So come out of the pose and uh, maybe gently come back in. Maybe you have to come in and out a little to let the muscles release. So that brings us to the second premise of yin, is that um, the muscles relax, and as the muscles relax, the stress, the dense connective tissue takes the stress. And as that happens, the body responds to that. So the body responds by sending reinforcements, and makes, builds stronger um, connective tissue and allows for better mobility in the joints, um, better um, space through the fascia, which is the covering of the muscles and kind of everything on the inside of us. Um, and just have an overall sense of well-being as a result. That doesn't mean you're not going to experience that dull, broad ache as you move through the practice. And then the third piece is that you maybe you've started to notice already, we stay in our poses for a longer period of time in yin than we would in our moving practices, our yang practices. And so um, it's not uncommon in the yin practice to stay in, to stay in poses in for about two to 10 or maybe even upwards of 20 minutes. We're obviously not gonna do that today because we don't want our yin 20 minute practice. So um, we're gonna stay in our poses a little bit shorter, uh, somewhere between the two and four minute mark as we move through our practice today. Um, we're just going to take a few more breaths here in Butterfly before we move on. So just take a few more breaths, I'll allow my head to drop. Start to create some space, some relaxation. You might notice in the poses that you find that first appropriate edge of resistance and then your body allows you to relax into the pose. So you can get a little deeper where the muscles relax and that's, that's fine. Not necessarily good or bad, it just is your range of motion. The goal here is not to wrap your foot behind your head, it's just to be in the pose. We'll take another two or so breaths here. Slowly walk the fingertips back, stack through the spine. Let the hands come back behind, so in between our poses. We move slowly as we come out, so I move a little slow, using my hands to 
support. And then we add in a little bit of slow movement. So we can mention wash the legs here. Take this pose, you felt this pose more on your knees. Maybe you'd extend one leg and the other. I tend to feel it in my hips and in my back. So windshield washering seems to be a good fit. And our next pose we're going to come to is called Sphinx. Sphinx is a pose that we do on our belly. And um, so some of what Sphinx is going to do is going to be to help us to wring out the kidneys a little. So come onto our belly, bring the forearms down, the legs relax, and then allow the shoulders to relax here. So you can see I kind of drop into, okay, so you might hang out here if this works for you. I have a tendency to start to rise back up, it's just in my nature, so I like to bring my elbows down and bring my either my hands to my chin or my hands to my forehead. It just depends on the day, play around with it a little. You'll notice hands on the chin is a little bit more sensation in the low back. Hands on the forehead is a little bit less sensation on the low back. Either is fine. That's what's appropriate for you on that day. Coming back to the breath. If you're someone that has a little bit more mobility here. You might feel like this uh, position is not enough. You're not getting enough um, stress, is what we call it, on the low back. Um, because what we're trying to do is increase mobility and, uh, and strength and stamina and all those wonderful things in our back. So if you're not feeling this or you want to feel a different sensation, you can always bend the knees and bring the feet up towards the sky. So I'm not really holding them here. I'm just kind of following my plumb line and my legs will hang out. Finding what works best for you and staying there. Take a few more breaths here. And if your legs are up, you can allow the feet to release down. And then from wherever your upper body position is, allow the elbows to come up to the side. You can bring the forehead to rest on the back of the hands. The idea here in this counter position, keep your head down and lifting mine so you can hear me. Um, the idea here is that you're just uh, re-neutralizing the spine by coming back to center. If just being on your belly is too much for you, then you can press back uh, to child's pose. And if you're um, doing this yin practice and you can't lay on your belly for some reason, you can always bring a bolster or a block um, behind the middle back and get the same effect uh, flipped upside down. So you would be back down. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders and slowly we'll press back. If you'd like to take a few breaths in child's pose, you can do so. This will give you a little bit more of a counter stretch. Or if not, you can start to find your way up to a seated position. So we're going to 
we move into half butterfly, half straddle. You know, we tend to just call it half butterfly. But the same idea is when we have the feet together and we relax the spine forward. This time we're going to relax the spine over the extended leg. So I like to use something to help to support the spine and prop me up a little. So I would just bring a pillow. I happen to have these fabulous huge pillows um, that I use for yoga all the time. You can lay that over. Um, I can fold it in half, which is what I often do with this pose. I'll fold it down. It also acts as like a bolster. You can block a little step stool, a chair, an ottoman, whatever. Um, and then allow the arms to come forward. Allow the spine to relax. As you relax forward and hang out, so maybe the forehead comes down. You feel a nice um, opening or sensation in the side body. I'm just going to keep an eye on the time so we stay balanced from right to left. Balance is a kind of a good topic to bring up here, now that we're doing one side and then the other. In that um, yin, we recognize that the body is not always the same from side to side, and that's okay. So um, if you're feeling like you fold over one leg, you can get way closer to the leg, you fold over the other leg, you're much higher up, you'll see that is the case for me. Um, that's okay. It, we're, not, uh, we're not focusing on that, we're just kind of hanging out and experiencing the experience in the dense connective tissue as the muscles relax. Take a few more breaths here. When you're ready to do so, using the hands, taking your time, slowly rising back up to center. Releasing the torso back to center. Take a few breaths here. There's a lot going on back here in the side, waist, side, low back. So you just want to make, move really slowly coming out of this pose. It's, it's very easy if you're moving quick to kind of tweak something. So take your time. And also this extended leg might need a little help. Draw it back in. Maybe add in that windshield washering or extending the legs. The windshield washer here. And one and then the other. Adding in whatever little movements feel good to you. And then from there, we're going to move into the other side. So as I said before, you might notice one side to the other is different. And so as a result, you might notice that your setup needs to be different. Um, my sides are different, but my setup is the same, just as what works for me. Um, but play around with it a little bit, see what's comfortable for you. And then once you're comfortable, start to rotate yourself a little towards that extended leg and allow the torso, um, the spine to relax forward.
and take another breath into here. Once you're ready to do so, using your hands to slowly lift back through the spine, removing any props out of the way, grinding your way back to center. Take a moment or two. And then again, using that hand to assist the outstretched leg to come back in. Sometimes I like to just counter the pose by coming into a stacked position or external rotation of the hip. That's what feels good to me. So. And we're going to come into our final series of poses, which is spine twists. So our entire practice today really is designed around um, cleansing the kidneys. Um, so if you have the chance and want to hold these poses for a little longer, you'll notice a clearing of the kidney and meridian, which means that you'll have to pee more. So um, you'll, this will help enough, um, but you certainly can, um, to, can lengthen this practice, so you're holding the same poses for a little bit longer. What we'll do is we'll start by coming onto our backs, drawing the knees in, and slowly rolling our bodies all the way onto the right side. I'm going to move my side out of the way. And then from the right side, allowing that left arm to wrap back open. Might happen to just have landed on the pillow, that's fine. Whatever you guys want to land, just checking my timer. Take another breath or two here. Slowly finding your way back through center. And once you're ready to do so, the knees come back in and draw up towards the left as the whole body rolls towards the left. And slowly wrap the right arm out. This twist is a pretty gentle twist. So you might be, your arm might be flying up here. You can just rotate it with the fingertips come down or put a pillow or something underneath the elbow, or the shoulder, or the hand, whatever works. Just want to be able to feel it a little on the side waist, or the kidney region. Take a few more breaths here. And 
you know, to do so, releasing back to center. Planting both feet on the ground, and you can take a few breaths here before coming up to seated, or if you'd like to take a few moments in Shavasana, a few minutes, descending all the way up. Allowing the body just to absorb the benefit of the practice, noticing any differences in the body and the mind. Once you're ready to do so. Do you find your way to seated or stay wherever you are? May the peace and love of the practice envelop you in your day. And may you feel loved always. Om Shanti. Namaste.